Here are nine mistakes that every new writer should try to avoid. Now why nine instead of 10? Well, because reasons. Number one, your scope is too big. One of the most common issues for new writers is their inability to limit scope. Inspired by great works of fiction, you seek to emulate your heroes but end up putting far too much pressure on yourself and your first novel. You get an idea for a novel and immediately start world building, designing complex characters, sketching out detailed world maps. Very quickly the scope of your novel becomes epic in scale. Meaning that instead of writing a relatively simple 80,000 word crime thriller, you're now writing a sprawling 900 page epic of such intricacy and complexity that it would take a miracle to pull off. See, the thing is those literary heroes we admire so much probably didn't write a masterpiece the first time around. Most writers spend years learning their craft, honing their skills and writing book after book getting better and better with each experience. The literary masterpiece you're so fond of likely wasn't the first thing they wrote and aiming for such a high bar on your first novel will increase the likelihood that the project becomes utterly overwhelming. So keep the scope of your first novel as compact as possible. Focus on a few key characters, a simple journey, a crime to be solved, something easy to define and plot out. Map out your novel outline Line, write your first draft, edit, re-edit, and get that book finished. Then start writing your next novel and expanding the scope a little, or a lot. The main thing is to get your first book finished. Number two, you're agonizing over that first draft. There's a temptation with new writers to waste a bunch of time editing, re-editing, spell checking, changing plot points, and so on. This will slow down your writing process and ultimately lead to you getting bogged down in your initial draft, making the project start to feel overwhelming and increasing the risk that you won't finish that novel. The first job of a draft is to get done. It won't be pretty and it won't be perfect, but that's not its job. As long as the main plot points are in there, don't get stuck on fixing spelling or grammar because you're going to do all of that later on when you move to the editing phase of the project. Just get through your first draft as efficiently as possible and leave agonizing over grammar and spelling to the editing phase. Number three, you're prioritizing set structure and not listening to your characters. As a new writer, you'll likely rely on a detailed outline to steer the writing process for your first book. And that's exactly how it should be. Writing by the seat of your pants sounds super fun, but it's not recommended if you're trying to write your first novel. Far better to have a clear idea of where your story is heading, where the key climax and crisis points are, and how you're going to resolve your novel. As you begin writing your first draft, however, you'll start to see characters emerge from the story. They'll begin speaking in their own voices and having their own thoughts. The more you start to understand your characters, the more more of an impact that will have on the direction of your novel. Where a character's nature conflicts with the plot point, there's a temptation to stick to your outline. Particularly because Muppets like me are telling you that you need to stick to your outline. But when characters start to assert themselves on the story, it's important that you adapt the plot where necessary to better fit your cast. Listen to your characters and let them direct where the story goes. If your hero is supposed to go crashing through a door into a burning building, but after five chapters of writing you realize that that's not really in their nature, then change your approach. Outlines and narrative structures are important but it's more important to pay attention to your characters. Think of them as actors in your story, actors that will have an informed opinion on exactly how they should behave when presented with certain circumstances. Now, just a quick note to say that if you're enjoying this video and you're getting something out of it, why not subscribe to my channel? It'll make me super happy and it'll give you the satisfaction of making the world just that little bit better. Number four, you're chasing trends. I can tell you from first-hand experience, the quickest path to misery for a writer is to chase trends and write in genres that you just don't like because they're popular. It's a no-win game, but there's always a temptation to leverage off current trends in the hope that your book will become more popular. Now, there are three big reasons why chasing trends doesn't work in the long term. First, if you go chasing trends and end up writing in an area you don't enjoy or don't have a passion for, however much effort you put into it, you'll still likely come off as disingenuous. You might be skilled enough to fool some readers, but you won't be able to fool yourself. Yourself. All of us struggle with imposter syndrome in our creative journey, but if you chase fads, you may legitimately be an imposter. Second, writing is a long game. It takes patience, perseverance, resilience, and all the other answers. When times get tough, if you've got a passion for what you're writing, that will help carry you through those hard times. But if you're writing to piggyback off a fad or trying to write in an area you just don't care about, that passion won't be there, and you'll have to struggle to stay motivated and productive. Third, even if by some miracle you do experience success writing in a genre or field which isn't your passion, that success will require you to write more and more of those kinds of books. You'll be successful and miserable. And if that's the goal, you might as well have gotten a job as a banker. Number five, you're revealing too much backstory. It can be difficult when you're starting out to know which details about your characters to reveal and which to keep hidden. You spend so much time developing a compelling history for your protagonist that the temptation to give it all away to readers can be a little overwhelming. But too much backstory will kill any intrigue your character has and risk knocking readers right out of the story. Yes, you need to have a clear backstory for your characters, but this should inform how they 
they act and what they say in your novel. It shouldn't be something you give directly to readers. Most actors will create a backstory for a character they're playing, but you don't hear them interrupting dialogue to inform viewers that they fell out of a tree when they were a kid, or they found a haunted pumpkin in the backyard, which explains their enduring fear of Halloween. Actors use their backstory to inform their acting, allowing them to inhabit the role they're playing so that their words and actions can flow naturally. Do the same thing in your writing. Use backstory to inform the way you write your characters, but don't flood readers with historical details they really don't need to know. Number six, you're saying the same thing over and over. As writers, we sometimes confuse emphasis with repetition. Yes, there will be certain themes and plot ideas that you'll want readers to be keenly aware of, and you may need to emphasize those points throughout your story. But repeating the same idea with slightly different wording a few paragraphs later will push the reader away rather than drawing them near. There's a saying among builders, measure twice, cut once. And the same thing can be said about writing. Think carefully about how you want to phrase your key points, and then once they're done, don't repeat them unless it's absolutely necessary. Now, I'll repeat that last point, but paraphrase. Don't cover the same point again unless it's genuinely required for the story. See what I did there? Huh? Huh? Number seven, your story meanders. You've written a great first chapter, hooked your reader, and you're taking them on the journey of a lifetime. But three chapters in, you're still describing your protagonist and building background. No primary conflict or crisis has been introduced and your reader is starting to lose interest. To put it bluntly, your book is starting to ramble, and that's not good. You need to get to the point. Introduce some drama, a ticking clock, a pressing issue, a pending deadline, something to keep your readers interested. Now, if you're a great outliner, you'll be able to pick this up and nip it in the bud at the outlining stage of your novel. You'll remove any sections that meander and try to make the structure of your book as compact and efficient as possible. If your outlining is fairly light, you might need to pick this up at the editing phase of your book. Either way, you'll need to remove or pep up those sections of story which meander. Keep the reading interesting, keep your reader hooked, and save the meandering for your next wedding speech. Number eight, your protagonist is just too much. To captivate modern readers, a hero needs to be more than just heroic. Modern readers like depth and complexity to their protagonists, but there's a temptation, particularly with new writers of genre fiction, to overdo the heroics. Painting your protagonist as an impossibly handsome, wickedly intelligent pediatric surgeon who's trained in 12 kinds of martial arts and brokers international peace treaties on the weekends is just too much. In order for your reader to feel empathy for your hero, they'll need to have insecurities, doubts, personal foibles, fears, aspects of their character which humanize them. Your protagonist can still excel at their field, be beautiful or exceptional in several ways, just don't make them overly one-dimensional. Now the caveat here is that many best-selling novels and films present exactly these kinds of over-the-top one-dimensional characters. I'm not saying that you can't write a bestseller with a hero who is a one-dimensional powerhouse of hyperbole. But if you want to craft truly intriguing characters that will enrich the lives of your readers, tone down the perfection, and give your protagonist a healthy dose of reality. Number nine, you're telling, not showing. The best advice for new writers is to show, not tell. But exactly what does that mean? The key here is to move away from descriptive language towards the reader experience. To quote Anton Chekhov, don't tell me the moon is shining, show me the glint of light on broken glass. The goal of an author is to immerse the reader in the world of the story. And one way to do that is to use language that includes the reader rather than relying on basic narration or description that explains to the reader what's going on. Think about your story from your protagonist's perspective and try and invite the reader to see the narrative world through their eyes. Now if you want to know my number one trick for making your novel irresistible to readers, check this out.